Well, regardless if you have been following Montana Knife Company since the very beginning, or if you're just looking for an ultralight compact fixed blade that you can take on your next backcountry adventure, hunting trip, or to possibly just daily carry as your dedicated EDC, you've definitely clicked on the right video because today we're gonna debone the full potential of the MKC Speed Goat in Magna Cut, as well as the MKC Stoned Goat in 52100 steel. And we're gonna discover together where these designs excel and where they may be limited now having put them through a few months of use. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna be running in some heavy hitters as competitive options. So thanks for hanging with me on this beautiful winter day in the Rocky Mountains. I'm Aaron, this is Gideon's Tactical. Let's go ahead and hop on back to the shop and start unpacking these tools. And we'll be hopping back to the high country momentarily. I just wanted to give us a better close up personal look at these designs, their competitors as we're unpacking you know, what they have to offer. And quick heads up, the day that I'm posting this video, there is a batch because Montana Knife Company often does like batches of blades. There is a drop happening of the stoned goat at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. There is a link in the description box below over their website. If you are interested and you want to pull the trigger, hop on that because as a reference, the first knife I ever bought from them, which was the Triumph XL, I went over there. They had a drop at 7 p.m. I was on their site like 7.05, 7.10. I'm checking out by 7.30 they were completely sold out. So they sell out fast. There is obviously a desirability going on with these models. Um, so just be aware of that. So if you're interested, psh, links below, as well as to the competitors we're gonna be talking about here momentarily, I'll be running in. Now, over the past few months, as I've been using these blades, I was trying to think of like a reference point for particularly those of you who are maybe considering these, regardless of it, your adventures in the outdoors or as an EDC, what is this kind of like? And it dawned on me and I was like, oh my gosh, that is a great reference point for many of us. And it has to do with Spyderco folders. These designs, not only in size, are very similar. You can think of capability, but you don't have any obviously folding parts, all the different things, because Spydercos are known for being very slicey, full flat grinds, lightweight, and relatively slim. Well, that is exactly what these tools are like. They both are gonna have full flat grinds on 0.09 stock thicknesses, which means these are insanely slicey very, very slicey. These are both going to weigh in at nine for the blades. So, I mean, that's the weight of like a Benchmade bug out, but you don't, again, you don't have all the folding. You don't have to clean them out like you would with a folder. If you're, you know, uh, cleaning a fish or game, food prep, whatever. And then obviously just the reliability of no action. And then with the Kydex cheese, they, those are going to be like, it's going to add a total weight of 4.1 ounces. And so that is wild on how lightweight and how slim they are. Even the paracord wrapped handles that we'll talk a little bit more in detail. They're about the same diameter of this Spyderco stretch. So that just gives, I hope, some reference idea to the tools. And so on a performance level, the slicing capability is where it's at. These are designed as skinning knives. Montana Knife Company, first and foremost, tends to focus on hunting usage and then utility and you know outdoor camping, whatever, secondary. And even when I was doing a lot of like woodworking, you're slicing into the, the wood. If it's white wood or soft wood, man, does it just like ow, gobble it up, bite in like crazy hardwood. And if you're doing like a feather stick, because they're so thin, you'll find this if you know, like from full fat, flat grinds, they're so thin. You actually have to work on the geometry. Once you get it, you can get a feather stick but you got to really kind of like, it takes some time versus like a Scandi or something is just like, you put it up against the wood and you got it. On harder woods, you will have to work a little finesse, then engage with the wood. You'll figure out the right angle and then it, it will give you the feather sticking uh, and you know, like those type of things that you would need. But the, the more malleable woods, it just like dominates notching and spear point making and you know, whatever you're doing, crafting with these tools. Now, before we go any further in the video, I wanna take a brief moment to thank today's sponsor, which is LA Police Gear. LA Police Gear is a friend of the channel and has been sponsoring content for years here and have been offering excellent quality gear and equipment from well-established brands for over 20 years. And they're one of the first distributors I look at when I'm needing to score a new piece of gear or equipment. As an example, on today's trek and on several lately, I've been using my Solomon 
X Ultra forces, and these boots are excellent. And LA Police Gear has a large variety of Solomon boots that you're not going to find at your normal sporting goods store. And if Solomon's aren't your thing, they have tons of other excellent footwear options, including 511 Tactical, Danner boots, as well as Merrill, and their own brand of LA Police Gear footwear that is high value and high performing. So, guys, I'm going to have a link in the description box below this video over to the LA Police Gear website where you can start exploring all the different pieces of gear and equipment that they offer as well as my exclusive 10% off promo code you can apply towards your purchase. So hop on over and check out all they have to offer. Now the tips are very precise because they are those skinning knives. The precision is insane. I did do my five strike piercing straight on. There's no bending, no deformation, no chipping, anything like that. But do not be treating these like a screwdriver. These are not screwdrivers. We have found that out with the um, Marshall Bushcraft where I did some stabbing. It was fine, lateral, bam, snapped at the tip right off. Now that size of knife, I argue should definitely have, have have a more reinforced tip, more durable tip. That is my argument. Hopefully we'll see a 2.0 in some iteration. But for these size of knives, precision is the name of the game. Totally makes sense. And just don't treat them like a crowbar. Uh, find, you know, a quarter inch thick freaking, you know, whatever, if you, that's what you want. So precision name of the game, food prepping, obviously, and any other sort of game processing. Now I'm really excited because I am in the process of getting my hunting license. I did not grow up in a family that hunted. Uh, and so I'm in the process of doing that. Last year started doing fishing um, and really looking forward to getting these onto the game trail because I've used them as like food prep knives, steak knives, uh, prepping, you know, meals with our uh, meats that we buy. And, it, and it's just like, dominates it. So I can only imagine processing and cleaning game. It's only going to take it to the next level. Now let's go ahead and touch on steels because we have two options, high carbon and stainless. The Stone Goat is currently rocking the 52100 ball bearing, high carbon, uh, chromium alloy based steel. So it was introduced in 1905 for ball bearing. So obviously dense, durable for high wear type of activities. It is tough. It is insane easy to get a stupid hair popping edge onto this thing. Uh, I mean, moments with my work sharp field sharpener, uh, I'll have a link in the description box below. I know you guys always ask about that. That's a great, I still use it all the time. Great option for like field sharpening. Um, the, very easy to just get like <laughs> pop it. Um, but it is a high carbon. So you got to watch the rust that has a parkerized coating on it. That's wearing really well. It tells the wear tells the story. I love it. No issues there, but you will want to keep an edge on the, uh, keep an eye on the edge to make sure it's not rusting, you know those type of things. Whereas the Speed Goat has Magna Cut. <laughs> now this is the original Speed Goat. Apparently they are releasing a 2.0 version that has a slightly more pronounced guard and about an eighth of an inch longer handle. Is my understanding. I've had zero issues with this model and the, and the Stone Goat as well. Uh, like piercing, do, like concerns about riding up on the blade, the very good traction point, but uh, just kind of a reference. And they do have a mini version of the Speed Goat. So with Magnet Cut though, what you're getting is a true stainless steel. Everyone like worships as footstool lately uh, and good, with good reason on many accounts. It doesn't need coating because it's stainless. It's going to have good wear resistance and good durability for uh, stainless steel. As an example, M390 will hold its edge a little longer than Magnet Cut, but is more difficult to resharpen. I found this relatively easy without much difficulty and literally some ceramic rod running and some stropping with my field sharpener keeps this edge like forever. I mean, it's just like, will hold its edge forever. Hold its edge, I found a longer than the 52100. It, you know, if it does damage, it, like if you chipped it or something on bone, then yes, you will, it'll take you longer than 52100 to work that out. Um, and the 52100 will be more durable, but you're going to have to, you know, you won't have to fight up against rust and it is more durable than a lot of other stainless steels like M390. So that's just a little bit of info there. I would love ultimately to see both blades with both steels at some point. Now, when we're talking about compact fixed blades like these carry options and versatility are 
key because you want to be able to deploy these very quickly and have a lot of options on how you may carry them regardless if you're trekking in the backcountry on a pack or you're just EDCing it around your property or you have a kill and it's now time to process. Well, these have some of the better sheath designs I've seen in quite a while. What we have is Kydex in a pancake formation. We'll discuss a little bit more about that as an option I think that should be offered down the line. But camp pancake means that you're gonna get lots of lashing options, excellent drainage hole, beautiful thumb ramp, making it very easy to pull out and deploy on both of these designs, and even a tension screw. That's very unusual for most Kydex sheaths, and I really like that. It means that you can really cinch that down and lock it down if you're carrying it in a horizontal format. Or if you want to loosen it up and you're just carrying it on your hip around the property, you can easily deploy it. So I really enjoy that. Now, it comes with an ambidextrous rotatable with two screws there, Kydex belt loop. That fits perfectly for most backpack straps in the formation that you're seeing right here. It is ideal for that type of design and works really well as uh, behind your belt or in front of your belt for your on-body carry. And that's a perfect lead-in to competitive options. And we got two today to look at, both a MagnaCut, since I don't have any 52-100 blades in this size range, that would just makes more sense. And I love doing the competitive option part of any video because it shows you what else is out there. It shows you what a particular design is offering and maybe what it is limited in to help you, you know, make wise choices. Now, we're gonna start here with, whoosh, the savvy blade lover knows what this is, the SC Knives Sensillo. First production run in El Magnacato, right there. USA made 0725, model number. I paid 175 for this blade right there with a Kydex sheath. These models, regardless of it's Magna Cutter or the 52100 is about 225, so about $50 more, depending on what you're you know, looking at here and where you pick up the SE. And I almost forgot, SE has their lifetime warranty and MKC has their generational warranty. Take care of it for generations to come. Now, MKC hooked me up with these models a few months ago so I could run them through the paces and really unpack what they're capable of and what they're limited in for you guys and help you determine what makes sense and what doesn't. Now, obviously the first thing right out of the gate is handle ergonomics. We got a handle scale and burlap micarta right there, kind of bean shaped and bells in the middle and kind of flares down on either side, filling out the hand with that really deep guard. So obviously, ergonomically compared to paracord wrap, if you're gonna do an hour of bushcraft, this is the better handle ergonomics. It just, it, it puts the pressure in your hand further, allowing for a more comfortable grip and feel for just slicing and wood crafting and notching and those type of activities. Now. Well, I used to not be a big fan, honestly, of paracord wraps, but in recent years, as I have EDC'd fixed blades more, I have gravitated to that depending on how the knife is laid out. These, I think, are laid out really well, filling out the hand, giving me the grip and texture that I would want. Sure, would an option with G10 handle scales be awesome? Totally. Uh, I actually, depending on how you're gonna use the tool, the paracord wrap, it's way like slimmer, easier to carry in your pocket that I'll talk about in just a moment. And so it gives you a lot of really good texture and just obviously lightens the load. But these handles do not distribute the pressure quite as well if you're gonna be doing a bunch of bushcraft. Really quick woodworking, totally. But an hour of bushcraft and woodworking, these handles are not my first choice. So, and we got about an eighth of an inch thick, just really quick stock tapers down to a really precise tip. Again, great for sweeping, not really great for piercing. And between the blade shapes, this is not my favorite blade shape. I don't like how wide and kind of snub nose it is. I like the nimbleness of these blades for general utility and those type of things. Kydex sheath is okay. The tension is mediocre. No tension screw, similar polymer clip, Kydex, uh, that you can change. Indecent, but not like mind blowing tension there between the two. The MKCs, she's are definitely better with the dial intention and everything we talked about. So that's model option number one. I'll have links in the description box below for that as well as the MKCs, as well as model number two, which is the TRC Polheim. The Polheim is made in Lithuania, also out of MagnaCut. If you're not familiar with TRC, they make exquisite knives. The, the quality control form function uh, is beautifully done, very well executed, very similar in size, a little bit longer, but we're looking at a thicker stock with a saber grind, micarta handle scales tubed in, 
Obviously feeling great, full in the hand. Tacoed Kydex sheath with a tension screw and an ulti clip, great for pocket carry. Works really well with that, good tension right there. And a slimmer profile, obviously giving you like a beefier grip overall. This is not gonna be as precise as nimble. This is way more tough, durable, overbuilt, weighs more, and is gonna be significantly more expensive at $350, over $100 more than what these in MagnaCut would be. So that's just things to consider. You know, there's value is something that you have to weigh. For some people, MKCs are way like, oh, that's not a good value. For other people compared to the TRC, it's a great value. You know, and depending on the SE, what you're looking at, good or bad, you know, so those are things that I'm hoping that this is unpeeling the layers of an onion for you guys to determine for yourself. Great, great blade, but just way, way bigger, thicker, and just not quite as nimble and precise, depending on what you need, what you like. Might be exactly what you're looking for or not. So to button this all up real quick for us, guys, if you are obviously a hunter and you're looking to process game, these MKCs make sense. If you're looking for an ultra light, ultra slim fixed blade EDC on your body, great layout for that. And if you're looking for an ultralight blade, you're an ultralight hiker, backpacker, and you just wanna do some basic woods working if you had to, basic utility around camp, and you just don't wanna carry a pocket knife, you want something a little bit more robust, that's where I feel like these really make sense. If you are looking for a dedicated woods working tool to pair with axes, machetes, those type of things, obviously something with a dedicated handle scale uh, and different types of blade shapes will perform and outperform these in those dedicated woods working tasks. So I hope that this video has been informative, entertaining, giving you guys really some food for thought, helped you unpack what these MKCs have to offer and whether or not they're the right tool for you. Leave comments below. Let me know your thoughts on MKC in general and these two blades, particularly if you own one, how have they been performing for you? As always, appreciate you hanging with me today. Check out the other video popping up and please subscribe till next time. Always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.